first, there have always been queer people in Newark. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth, right? And uh, what I don't want to do is to, to assume that Newark as space has um, sort of this inherent sort of uh, resistance against queer people because it's a sort of black and brown space, and typically we think black and brown spaces are more homophobic than others. But I think queer folk are fighting themselves out, quote unquote, in institutionalized or a systemic um, and, and systems is, is another thing. So for instance, Newark is, has a commission that looks at LGBTQ concerns that's actually adopted, that was adopted by the council. Commissioners are appointed by the mayor. They advise the mayor on, on issues relative to the queer, to queer life. And not only is it a phenomenal um, undertaking for Newark, it is the first of its kind in the state. Um, so that says something, I think, one, about Newark's openness um, and forward moving, uh, not just um, uh, you know, amongst urban spaces, but amongst New Jersey. But then Newark also has uh, subcommittees that's organized around policy that looks at LGBTQ issue, issues uh, at the policy level. Uh, there's an after school program specifically designed to provide queer youth in the city of Newark with safe space and after school hours and services to, to the schools when they need it. Uh, there are a number of organizations, Newark Pride Alliance, Liberation and Truth, Project WOW, African American Office of Gay Concerns, and, and many more that exist who provide services to queer youth and who have been providing services to queer youth. Um, and then, you know, there are faith communities who are also doing work uh, in, in open and affirming ways as well uh, that have been doing so for some time. So the Episcopal Diocese, along with liberation and truth. So I think what we're seeing is sort of systems, spaces that had otherwise been closed off to queer folk. Queer folk were always there, now opening up their spaces, and that's the change. Um, indeed, it was Newarkers who worked with the county government to establish a similar body at the county level. So now Essex County, the county seat, which is home to Maplewood and South Orange, which you think would have been running to this years ago, took the heat from Newarkers, you know, um, to develop. And actually, it was mostly Newarkers at the table helping to design what is now the county commission, um, providing the county, the county seat uh, with advisement around LGBTQ concerns. So, I think what's, what's changed is the ability of the systems and institutions to recognize the specific needs of queer people and to make space for them as leaders, not just amongst, uh, you know, to do uh, the, the work of queer movement building, um, but there are queer leaders who have work, who are working in City Hall as policy analysts, who are running nonprofit organizations, who are running and being appointed to government bodies who are being elected. Um, so I think that's where the change is coming. But here's a space where even with um, the, 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 the very real and visceral types of problems that people face, there are shootings that, that have, have not stopped happening. Um, unemployment rates that are increasing. HIV AIDS rates that are increasing across many populations. But there's still this sort of urgency of now, this, this sort of sense of activism and this sense of uh, responsibility and hope that's maintained by individuals. There's a sort of agency, a communal and individual agency that exists in Newark that I have not seen in other places. Um, and I think it's that then that will exist before and after Cory Booker, um, that it will enable Newark to be a very particular type of space that one must look at um, in terms of what urban redevelopment looks like in this particular moment in American history.